So yesterday I was driving in my car, had to go to my parents, driving home, had a little while to drive, and I'm thinking to myself, because I had nothing else to do but drive and think, of this meditation that I had years ago, where I was in a closet uh, meditating, and this version of Jesus approached me and said that you are not, you're in this world, but not of this world, and it's all all there was, there was there was telecommunication between this being and I, and that was it. And I got to thinking about it last night, about that's so true. Like, and the proof of the fact that you are here, but you're not from here, is when you die, you bring nothing with you. You don't even bring the body, the, the suitcase, the garage, whatever, for the, you know, ghost in the shell that, that you were when you, when you came here. You are just gone. It's just, it just reminds me of when I uh, had to put my cat down and I picked her little lifeless body up and I put it in a box and I took it with me because they were gonna charge $8 billion to cremate her. I'm like, what? I looked at her as I'm putting in the, her in this box and I'm like, everything you needed. And I've been to so many funerals too, it's crazy. I never thought this before, but everything that this cat needed she was provided with, and she had to do nothing other than just be herself, shit all over the house like usual, and not use a litter box. Like, this is all she had to do. And uh, she got everything she needed. I mean, we cleaned up after her. I mean, she literally didn't even like have to clean up after herself. She just took a dump wherever she felt like. I mean, most people uh, would have gotten rid of her, but I, I did not, you know? like. But that's not the point. So she had everything that she needed when she was here. And it's the same with us. Like if I really think about the every single funeral that I have been to, every single person that I have been to their funeral, none of them needed anything other than what they had when they were here and everything that they had when they left was still here. It's still here. It's not leaving. It's, it's just like a hologram or whatever this is that we live in, it's not you. So while you're here, why are you trying to conform to the laws of, of the world and, you know, seeking these pleasures that most people rarely find anything from? Think about the last time you had like an, uh, an order coming in and you shipped it next day or the same day or whatever. And you're like, man, I can't wait for that. And think about just a week later. You probably don't even remember what that was. You probably don't even remember what it was. But at that time, it seemed so just you needed it so bad that you had to have it in that that short amount of time and now you don't even remember what it was think about how much of this of our life is spent with this trying to seek pleasure and and stuff like that when there's other things that you could be doing like think about that gut feeling that you had that you did you want to go do something else but you never do it because you're trying to fill that pleasure void with other things whether it's sex sex, you know, drinking. I mean, there's, there's many things, you know, like there's many things that you can do to try to seek pleasure. And it's just how, how is that working out for you? And how, how much does it actually give you? Like when you actually follow the purpose that is always eating at you, you've always got something eating at you know, there's just like this one thing that you, it might be real, like it might be really far fetched. You might be like, I don't even know how this is possible. How would I possibly get this done it's kind of like when i started my photography studio i was photograph i had the camera i had a little bit of lighting and i would shoot off off site like at different places because i didn't have a site to actually go to and i started thinking like i'd really like to have a studio uh, i really got to go for this and all of a sudden a friend of mine who has had has had whatever i don't even really talk to him anymore but he had a lot of money he's like you got a lot of talent I know that your uh, own teacher actually uh, nominated you for a Pulitzer Award and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I, let me let me help you find a studio. And I'm like, I know a couple people who run studios because I was run, working at a camera shop downtown. And so we went to a couple of them, so, you know, and we, I found one and he paid for it. And it's just like, this is how that happened. This is how I got that studio. I, I, I wasn't going to pay for it myself because I just didn't have enough coming in at the time to actually. And then it just, you know, it took off. And then, of course, self-sabotage, whatever. And, it, you know, whatever. So it didn't end well but it started well but every time i have followed that little voice of mine it'll tell you like to hold back to now's now now you got to go hold back or whatever it is i i had a, like an older man he's he's passed now but a long time ago when i was growing up he told me and he was one of the happier people i've ever met in my life he's like if you don't do something that terrifies you every day then you are not living you're just here you're just existing you're just a rock you're just like a rock in the creek, you know, water's running all, right over you. Whereas, you know, somebody who's always living in that is the water. 
You know, the rock is the person who's just sitting there going to a mundane job every day, doing the same exact thing every day. And if that's your thing, fine, whatever. And the person who is willing to conform to whatever it is or to do whatever it is that they are here to do is like the water etching everything out in, in its way. Now, it might take, a, it might be a slow process. It might be a fast process. But be the water, be that fluid, you know, or or even like the fire, you know, the devastation. But whatever it is, be that. Because just being in that solid state of a rock, which ironically is not actually solid. If you look at it at a molecular level, there's nothing solid on this planet. But we agree. I'm pointing over here to a kettlebell. That's pretty solid, right? It looks pretty solid. We agree that that's solid, but it's really not if you look at it at a molecular level. And the more you start walking down that path, now I have a little bit now here and there, right? Like for example, this week, I every week I do DoorDash. I hate it. I hate it. I can't. I like so this week I didn't even schedule myself. I'm not going and doing. I'm not doing it. Money comes in from other places. It's amazing to me when you actually start following that tra trajectory that you're supposed to be on, that everything that you need for that journey is kind of like when my when my cat passed, I realized everything she needed for this journey of taking a dump wherever she felt like, not using a litter box, but being a cat, she had that trajectory and everything came in exactly when it was needed. Like she might've wanted more food than she really got, but everything that she needed was in perfect line. Be that. Be in that perfect alignment. If you're doing whatever you're doing to please your parents or please somebody else, you know, you only get so much enjoyment out of that. And ironically, my parents who I've tried to please my whole life don't ever follow any of like they just do whatever they want to like it's it's crazy so anyway all this was coming into my head when i was driving and everything like that and i'm like well i guess i'll make a short video about this but it's just if you have that and i'm not saying sit on the couch and be lazy i'm not one of these manifests sit around and manifest you don't, you don't have to do anything but eat popcorn you know you know you don't have to just sit back and, and watch everything unfold you can be active in the process but really think about what is it like you there's usually I, I usually because I've had a lot of jobs a lot of jobs and I'll sit at these jobs or stand at these jobs and there's always somebody that I work with talking my ear off about something that they are so passionate about I'm like why don't you go do it you tell me how you hate doing this job every day yeah but it's a solid paycheck okay nobody at your gravestone is going to be like yeah he went to that solid job every day nobody talks about this shit. imagine being at your own funeral what do you want the people to say about you at your own funeral even visualize this now i'm not really into this whole you know whatever anymore like i really started backing off from that because i realized it kept me like in bondage and like just miserable but really think about what do you want your funeral to look like what do you want the people to be saying about you oh he was an asshole but he got things done or whatever and, and another thing is no one cares how much overtime you work no one's going to talk about how much overtime you work your employer doesn't care about how much overtime you work sorry to tell you this they do not care if you quit today They'll like, you know, be a little upset and maybe running around a little bit and then they'll replace you tomorrow. Gone. No one cares. No one cares. Don't put so much effort into a job that doesn't care about you that will replace you the next day, provided they actually hire. I hear that like nobody's actually hiring, even though they say they're hiring, you know, provided that actually happens. No, like I, I, when I think about my childhood, like it drove me nuts that my father who was like a master gardener and everybody wanted him to do that. And he talks about it all the time. You should see, this guy could write software about how like a seed schedules and all the kind of stuff, but he worked all the time. And I know I just mentioned them, but like, you know, like my parents won't do any, like if you invite them to a party or something like that, or invite them to this or so, if they don't feel like doing it, they're just not going to do it. And I like look up to that. Cause like my, a lot of the times I'll still do it. My sister says the same way. I watch it and it drove me nuts. Like he was always at work, it drove me crazy. Cause he it, it wasn't needed. Like he has this skill. <sighs> Anyways, I think this is a combination of all of my skill that I don't use. My father who has like, dedicated one track skill like crazy like dude could just grow anything anywhere he could probably grow a tree off this notebook here somehow it's 
crazy. I have some of that. I can grow potatoes, watermelon, and stuff like that to survive on. I'm, you know, whatever. But I watch this and I'm like, wow, why? And then my sister has crazy skills too. And she just works these, like, I'm like, why do we do this? Why is this a thing? Like, why? You are only here for a certain amount of time. Why give it to somebody else to, to build their dream? I don't understand that. I don't understand it. And I mean, I, I guess I guess I don't understand it because I've done it. Not to some extent. I have had a lot of run-ins with employers over the years. You know, what, what can you do about that? Like, I remember one time this guy was like, um, I said something. I, I said, don't talk to me like that, man. Like, I, you know, I'll just leave. I, you know, I don't care. Like, everybody's hiring. It was the 90s. Everybody's hiring. I mean, you could pretty much get like a $1,500 bonus. Just go work somewhere, you know, because they couldn't find enough people. And uh, maybe it was early. It doesn't matter. And he's like, you know, you know, I, I sign your checks. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, God signs my checks and he'll tell me when to leave here. It could be today. I don't know, but I don't need your attitude. And he was so mad. He might've fired me. I don't care. Whatever. I've had so many jobs. I, it's just like, I am not adopting your like the thing, man. This is your thing. This is not mine. I'm not owning this. It's kind of like when people watch sports and they act like they own the team. Like, oh, we won today. You didn't do anything but watch the game. Like, you don't have any stake in this whatsoever unless maybe you bet on it. You have no stake on it. I, and Or like even when I'm at a job, like a huge, like when I've had one of these huge conglomerate jobs, they own that shit, man. They own it like crazy. They they get that culture in there. They're, it's like, I'm like, what are you? Like, what are you? Who, you know, like what happened to you that you are owning this so much? I don't like you. I, I, I don't even, you know, like I know we're not supposed to dislike people, but man. No, and well, we got to do this over here. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Listen to yourself, you know, and they're going to fire you before they fire me because I don't care about any of this. It, you ever notice that? Like the person that's over here, um, <laughs> you know, like super anal about everything is the one that's going to get fired most of the time. And the dude like me over here who's like does not care. I'm a really good worker. I'm not saying I'm not a good worker. And that's probably why I don't get fired because I will run circles around you. I don't own any of it, man. Like when I leave here, I don't even know where I work. I don't talk about it. You don't even know if I have a job. Anyways, this is a tangent video, just like every other video lately. I don't know. Tangentville has arrived and I'm just off on tangents because I'm watching people like, I'm like, why are you, why, like, why? Anyways. Think about a talent that you have. It's like that story in the Bible where uh, the, you know, he's like an angry guy, I guess, but he gives like her, one servant over here, like 15 talents and this guy, 10 talents and this guy over here, one talent. Well, the guy with one talent buries his talent, doesn't use it at all. And the guy with 15 talents uses all of them. The guy with 10 talents uses all of them. And when the master comes back, you know, the guy with 15 talents now has 30. Guy with, uh, you know, uh, 10 has like 15 or something like that. And the guy with one buried it. And he's like, why'd you bury it? I gave you one talent. I don't I don't help anybody. I helped you. Why'd you, why'd you bury it? And he's like, well, I didn't want to lose it. And he's like, all right, well, can I see that talent back? And he took it and gave it to the guy with 30. And that's how the world works. Don't hide this stuff. You will be miserable the rest of your life. I guarantee it. And don't seek pleasure. Not that you can't have any, but if it's all you're looking for, you're going to be miserable. Plain and simple. You're going to be miserable. And if you're watching this and you're miserable, I guarantee that that's what you're doing. <sighs> that or just wanting to watch me rant. Yes, I think that's the end of the video. It is so humid down here. It's crazy. I got to turn the fan on. I like the heat. I do. Not even complaining. But man, humid. Um, yeah. I don't know. Comments, questions down below. Fine. You made it this far though, you had better like it or dislike it. Cause when they get disliked, they seem to do even better. I don't understand it either. I thought that was the thing that they got rid of, but it doesn't seem that way. I'll talk to you in the next one. I don't think I have anything. I mean, just think about this, right? Think about how miserable you are right now. Think about where you actually talk about, what you talk about all the time. Just like start moving that way. I don't know. What's the worst that could, you could happen? You could fail. I've done that many times. It's just part of life. Anyway, 
Talk to you in the next one.